These are my top five emergency veterinary skills that every dog parent should know. Number one, and I think this is more important than anything else, you've got to be able to assess, is this an emergency or not? Exactly what needs to happen right now. I used to see this in practice, get this on after hours calls. In some cases, it was people that just waited too long. You know, their dog had this distended abdomen, ongoing, ongoing vomiting, and they're like, ah, I just got into something. Let's just wait and see. That dog had bloat. He needed to be seen right away. You wait too long, your dog could die. Or the other extreme is getting a call on emergency in the middle of the night and some has noticed these little blackish critters hopping off their dog. Definitely not an emergency. What's the biggest clinical sign you're first seeing? Like is your dog in respiratory distress? Taking these deep labor breaths. Maybe we're dealing with heart failure. You know, lift up your dog's lips. Look at their gum color. Is it bright and pink? That means there's a good healthy blood supply. Your dog's not anemic. Put your finger on it. See the capillary refill time means it got adequate blood pressure. This is normal perfusion, tissue perfusion. We're not dealing with the dog in shock. A dog that was in shock, these gums would be completely pale. Be able to feel your dog's heartbeat and calculate the heart rate. You know, the heart is easy as found, located in here and behind the left armpit between the third and the sixth rib space. You can put your hand right now over top of your dog's heart. You can easily feel your dog's heart beating. Use your watch, right? I want you to count the number of beats in 15 seconds, multiply that by four. For a dog in shock, the heart rate's gonna be quite rapid. Some of the toxins, the poisonings, they can cause a really low heart rate. This is in the middle of the summer, your dog's been left in a confined space. You come home, he's just excessively panting and drooling. You look at its tongue, it's kind of an office bluish color. You should be thinking like, my dog might have heat stroke. Ensure you have yourself a thermometer. Be able to take your dog's accurate rectal temperature. So to become comfortable assessing your dog, you need to be comfortable just examining your dog. And one of the things I always suggest is just get comfortable with a basic veterinary exam where once a week you're examining your dog. You're lifting up his lips, you're looking at his gum color, you're checking his CRT, opening his mouth, looking at his tongue. Looking at his eyes, you're looking at the white part around his eyes, the sclera, making sure it's not jaundice. Looking at his ears, you're palpating your dog's throat, you're palpating the lymph nodes, right? You're palpating the heart, palpating the abdomen, you know, feeling any unusual lumps or bumps, feeling the lymph nodes behind the knees, right? Palpating the joints all the way down to the feet. By doing that once a week, you know what normal is, and then you're gonna know, okay, there's something really big and abnormal off of my dog, I need to act now. Number two, what to do if your dog is in shock from bleeding. More common emergencies, your dog's been hit by a car and they're bleeding. Like, there's a bunch of things you should be able to do now. First, assess your dog as best you can, you know, being gentle, lifting up his lips, looking at his gum color. They bright and pink, they've gone kind of pale, he's starting to go in shock, all right? And then visually you're looking like where is the bleeding coming from? If for instance it's the rear leg, you're seeing this blood just pulsing out here out of the rear leg, it's possible that femoral artery has been lacerated. So the first big principle regardless of where your dog is bleeding and where the bleeding is coming from, you're putting pressure over top of wherever the bleeding is coming from. You're holding that with firm pressure. And if that blood it bleeds through that gauze, you're putting more gauze on top of that. If all you have something is like a tea towel, that's fine, just use that. But the principle here is you're putting compression over top of wherever the blood's coming from. You're applying firm pressure and you're leaving it. You're not removing it. It's also a good idea to have some type of basic emergency kit. You can grab some of this cling in emergency and then you can wrap your dog's wound, slowing the bleeding. If an artery's been lacerated, if you're not doing something right away, your dog could likely die by the time you even get in to see the emergency vet. Number three, poisonings. This is extremely common, one of the most common reasons I was ever called on emergency. So your dog's consumed an excess amount of dark chocolate. Do you know what to do? First, I encourage you to calculate exactly the amount your dog has consumed, what type of chocolate. I'll put a link to the chocolate toxicity calculator in the description box. I want you to be able to recognize if your dog has been poisoned. You know, so are they acting very weak and wobbly? Does it look like they may be starting to tremble and or seizure? Are you seeing like excessive drooling? For many of the toxins, including chocolate, you know, if you can't get in and see your veterinarian in a timely manner, 
maybe it's in the middle of the night, emergency air isn't an option. At the very least, you should be able to one, induce vomiting, and then secondly, give your dog something so they can absorb that toxin. If Tula was to eat a toxic plant, if Tula was to consume an excess amount of dark chocolate, there's two things I'd first do. Number one, 3% hydrogen peroxide to induce vomiting. The dog dose, it is five mils or one teaspoon per 10 pounds of body weight. Tula is 20 pounds. She'd be eating 10 mils or two teaspoons. I would then tilt her head back, seat the syringe into the corner of her mouth, and then squirt that into the corner of her mouth, holding her mouth shut so I see her swallowing it and I know she's ingested it. I would then expect her to vomit within 10 minutes and if she didn't vomit within 10 minutes, I'd then repeat it. If your dog is completely lethargic, completely non-responsive, you're not going to induce vomiting. That could cause aspiration pneumonia. You're just gonna rush your dog into the clinic immediately. But you've caught it early, like I just saw Tula consume all those dark chocolate chips. Then I wanna get them out. I don't wanna wait and see the signs of poisoning. That's why I have the 3% hydrogen peroxide on hand. I'm gonna induce vomiting. The other thing I suggest every dog parent have on hand is this, it's activated charcoal. It does a great job of absorbing whatever toxin your dog has consumed. The capsules are pretty easily, they're 225 milligram capsules. You know, it's a minimum of one capsule per 10 pounds of body weight. And if you're gonna be using the activated charcoal, you wanna wait until your dog has stopped vomiting after the peroxide. Number four, do you know what to do if your dog is choking? You threw this small ball for your dog to catch. All of a sudden, like she's having difficulty breathing. You can hear this <gasps> deep raspy sounds. This could easily lodge in the trachea. Your dog's gonna stop moving. They may be leaning their head forward. <gasps> They're trying to take air in. It's obvious. They're making these deep raspy noises. They're trying to get air in and they can't get adequate enough oxygen. First, just use your finger, sweep in behind the back of your dog's mouth and throat. See if you can hook your finger onto that ball and pull it out. Put your hands under your dog's belly. I want you to hold him or her up, upside down. Okay, and you're gonna be putting five firm compressions on your dog's belly, pressing down and in. One, two, three, four, five. You're putting force on the belly, which is putting force on the diaphragm, which is gonna help expel that ball. Obviously, Tool is not a great example. She's not choking, but a dog that's choking, it's gonna be relatively flaccid. They just can't, don't have any air anymore. They've just passed out. So you're trying to use the force of gravity while you're hanging your dog upside down, putting force on the diaphragm to expel that ball. You know, do five compressions, check the back of your dog's throat. Do five more compressions, check the back of your dog's throat until you can get that ball out. If you have a large dog, which you can't pick up, you're wrapping your hands around your dog's abdomen once again, you're gonna put pressure up on the abdomen, up towards the chest wall, so we can put pressure on the diaphragm. You're gonna do five firm compressions, check the back of your dog's throat, is the ball removed? Number five, what to do if your dog has bloat. This emergency is so serious, it's considered the mother of all dog emergencies. Something where there can be very little time, you need to act really quick, but you need to be able to recognize it. Typically in bloat, we're dealing with these deep chested dogs. You know, think of Doberman pinchers, etc. You have air distending in the stomach. So the stomach is distending or it's bloating. But in some of these dogs, it can actually twist. And if it twists, it compromises the organs. It compromises the blood supply. Your dog can die really quickly. You're dealing with the dog. He's just been fed. All of a sudden, he doesn't look so good. He's maybe standing you know, with his legs planted in front of himself. And he starts to throw up and he's repeatedly regurgitating, trying to vomit, not much is coming up. A dog that is repeatedly vomiting, nothing is coming up. Like that's a huge red flag. Maybe the abdomen is very distended here, right? It almost feels like a balloon. Likely you're dealing with a dog that is about to bloat. And if your dog is just this repeated vomiting, like he, and he's not bringing anything up, he's got this distended abdomen, I also encourage you to lift up your dog's lips. Look at their gum color. If their gums are not this nice, healthy pink, they're this pale white, like, oh, likely you're dealing with a dog that is in shock, he's bloating, likely it's, there's a torsion where that stomach is twisted. Like you need to get in and see an emergency vet as soon as possible. But if your dog isn't repeated vomiting, he's still sort of walking around, you're just feeling this really distended abdomen. Maybe it's just air, the stomach is yet to twist. There's a couple things that you can try to maybe decrease the air production decrease the likelihood it's gonna go ahead and torsion. Number one, I hope you're gonna have activated charcoal on hand. 
it's used to decrease gas production, right? A standard dog dose, about one 250 milligram capsule, which are these capsules, per 10 pounds of body weight. If you have that, get that into your dog. Then number two, this is something that's often used by people to decrease gas production. Here's, this is Gas X. The drug name is Cymethicone. A standard dog dose, about a quarter of a capsule per 10 pounds of body weight. You know, it's for a medium dog, you have about two capsules, a larger dog, three to four capsules. The next thing you want to do is get your dog moving. In some dogs, by getting them to walk around slowly, we can get that gas to move. Fortunately, this isn't a really common emergency, but it's so, so serious. So if you see those clinical signs, you need to be able to act really quick. Thanks so much for watching this edition of Veterinary Secrets of my top five essential veterinary skills that every dog parent should know. Click up there to subscribe, hit the bell to sign up for notifications, and when you click that link directly in the box below, I can send you a copy of my free book.